Is upgrading your projector to an LED wall worth the investment? Can you even make it happen on a non-megachurch budget? In this video, I'll answer those questions. Well, hey, if you don't know me, I'm Dylan, Cade's beardless brother, and I'm a part of the Collaborate Worship team. Now, this is not a video on the theology of finances in the church and how you should spend your worship budget, but if you find yourself in need of a screen upgrade, but you're just not sure which direction to go in, we hope this helps you make an educated decision. First, the backstory. We have been using a consumer grade projector for a handful of years now. It was getting the job done without causing any huge issues, and it cost us probably about $1,000 when it was new. When we moved into our current location, mounting the projector presented a handful of challenges, as you can see in the footage, but we made it work. Fast forward to about a year ago when we upgraded our subwoofer and started to experience some new issues. Even though we don't run our sound at ridiculous volumes, our new, much more capable subwoofer was causing the projector to shake every time the drummer hit the kick drum. This added to an ongoing issue where the projector would move with the building on a really windy day. It made for a pretty disorienting viewing experience. To round off the issues, it is also in the way of our front stage lighting and makes it difficult to aim them properly. If you've got any similar issues with your projector, let us know in the comments. I'm curious to know if we're alone. So even if we compromised with how we run our sound, which would have been a pretty big compromise, we still had issues with our projector moving. For a while, we've just kind of lived with it. Then it came time to replace the bulb in the projector and wouldn't you know, the old thing blew its power supply when I was remounting and testing it. So it came time to actually replace it. And while we were at it, we wanted to take the opportunity to improve the viewing experience as much as we could. We looked into the Epson Pro G7500U LCD projector because we have seen it in another building and we're pretty impressed with its brightness and color for $6,000. But then we would be spending $6,000 to have a better image, but still the same underlying issues. Maybe we could have found somebody to hire that could have found a way to mount it better, but at what cost? And we'd still be experiencing some of the same trade-offs that come along with projection. Then we came across Worship Productions. They specialize in church LED walls and make it much more affordable for churches to have the best in display technology. Go get a quote from anywhere else and you'll see how competitive they are. And they do it so that churches can more easily afford this incredible technology. For our room, we were really interested in their Sela package, which starts at $10,999. After consulting with them, we learned that due to the size of our room, we needed to upgrade the pixel pitch from 3.9 millimeters to 2.5. And because the screen is in camera, we needed to upgrade the refresh rate as well so that it didn't flicker. If you don't know what pixel pitch is, it's basically just how these type of screens measure their resolution. It's the distance between each individual pixel. Smaller the pixel pitch, the higher the pixel density. They were totally right with the pixel pitch that they recommended us because it looks perfect for our room and anything higher would have looked low res. The size of our screen is about 10.5 feet by 6.3 feet coming in at a resolution of 1280 by 768, just a little taller than 16 by nine. It's only a little bigger than our old projector screen that was about 10 feet wide, but it fits the size of our room really well. I wouldn't say that installing the screen was easy, but it wasn't too bad. If you're tech savvy and at least a little handy with tools, you can make it happen. Plus our sales rep Dale was quickly available to us to answer all of our dumb questions and with a lot of grace and patience. It took about a half a day for me and my father-in-law to do the rigging and the ceiling, we had to make some perpendicular supports that would allow us to mount to the two purlins that are in front and behind the place that we wanted to mount the screen. We used the highest gauge super strut to do it. Then we came out of the super strut with heavy duty eye bolts and connected chain to that, which then connects to the eye bolt on the LED screen's mounting bars, one for each column of panels. Then you start building your screen one panel at a time, one row at a time. They lock into each other from each side and from the top and bottom with built-in locks and also include additional support that you can bolt into each panel. With our screen being five panels wide by three panels tall, Kate and I, along with some help from our editor Mason, were able to get it put together in about an hour and a half total. From there, you just have to find a way to daisy chain your panels, power and data down to two ethernet cables and two power inputs. We also had to get two new wall plugs installed to power the screen because it requires a dedicated breaker for each daisy chain, which can be up to eight panels. So one wall plug for eight of our panels and another one for the other seven. Also important to note is that we are using Furman power conditioners to not only clean up any dirty power, but also protect from surges and provide an easy way to power it on and off. I'll include a link in the description to the one we use as well as other recommended equipment. 
Once your power and data are daisy chained and connected, you have to get into the software of the video processor that comes with your screen and tell it how your panels are chained together so that it can properly stitch the image together. Kate had a little trouble figuring it out until he watched Worship Productions tutorials and then it was a breeze. The front of the screens are a little fragile, so we had to replace a few of the modules due to some dead pixels from the shipping process, but they include extra modules in your kit and will repair the ones that you replaced and send them back to you so you still have plenty of spares should something happen. One thing we didn't do that we should have is power the panels on one at a time and check all the pixels before putting the screen together. Modules uh, are definitely easier to switch out before the screen is assembled, but it's still possible to do once fully assembled. We got it hooked up and working and were immediately blown away by the quality of the screen. It was so bright and crisp, especially after looking at a projector for so long. The 2.5 millimeter pixel pitch looks perfect in the room. It looks perfectly smooth and seamless from about the third row and back, but even in the front two rows, you have to be really looking for it to see any pixels and the seams are still invisible. It still looks impressively sharp and clean from the first row, which says a lot because it's pretty close to the screen. The first Sunday that we got to use the LED screen was Easter, so that was really cool. It was also the third or fourth Sunday that we were trying out haze in the room, and it really elevated the experience. The image cuts right through the stage lighting and haze as if nothing is there. Something that couldn't be said with projection. Probably my favorite thing about it compared to projection besides its brightness is that black is actually black. It's not affected by stage lighting spill, and when nothing is on, it just blends in with the black curtain behind it. It makes for a really cool look in moments where you don't want anything on it, or you just want the lyrics without a motion background. This is thanks to the design of this kind of display. It's similar to an OLED screen in the fact that if a pixel is off, it's off. There's no backlight as each pixel produces its own light. And also the obvious fact that you don't have to have white projection material, which cleans up the look of the stage a lot. <laughs> If you have an LED screen at your church, what are your favorite things about it? Let me know down in the comments. So was it worth the extra cost over a nice projection system? We think it was without a doubt. It's not a necessity, but it does provide a lot of benefits that we are really pleased with. It not only improved the look of our stage, but expanded our capabilities with content creation in our services. And it's gonna get a lot of use because not only do we use it on Sunday morning, but we have two other churches that use our building each week. And we also rent it out as an event center on the days of the week that we don't use it. I can sit here and tell you how great it is all day, but it comes down to whether or not it fits in your church's budget. But if you're in the market for a new front of house display, you might be shocked to find out that you can make an LED screen work with your budget thanks to Worship Productions offering these at such a competitive price for churches. If that's you, you can head over to the link in the description and get a quote for an LED screen at your church. This video is sponsored by Worship Productions and they did give us a deal on our church's LED screen in exchange for sharing our experience here. But we seriously can't recommend them enough. They were so helpful throughout the process and the screen just looks so good. And they offer them at nearly half the cost of some other companies, like seriously. So if you're ready to get a quote on an LED screen for your church, head to the link in the description. And if you thought this video was helpful, be sure to hit the like button so YouTube knows to show it to other people. And if you wanna see more visual related content on the channel, let us know in the comments and subscribe to see our future content. We'll see you next time.